الحكمة هي الفقه ومعرفة مراد الله ورسوله والحكمة وضع الشيء في موضعه بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله In the name of Allah, all the praises and thanks be to Allah and may Allah raise the rank and grant peace and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah. Muslim Islamic School in Davao City, Philippines is pleased to present to you a lecture entitled Fasting and Success to be presented by Ustad Abu Suhaila Umar Quinn Hafidhahullah Ta'ala as part of the two-day webinar under the theme Preparation for the month of Ramadan, this 13th day of Sha'aban, 1442 Hijri, corresponding to the 13th of March, 2021. Alhamdulillahi wahda wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala man la nabiya ba'da وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد Then this morning inshallah ta'ala wa for you is the afternoon in the Philippines We gather with our brothers and our sisters في الله سبحانه وتعالى for the Islamic Wisdom School in Davos to talk about the connection between al-sa'ada and al-falah happiness and success and fasting for indeed fasting is something that is unlike anything else as a form of worship and in the wisdom of why it is legislated as a messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in a hadith advising Abu Umam al-Bahini alayka bi sawm fa innahu la mithla lahu after Abu Umam had went out to defend the frontiers of the Muslims and to fight on the battlefield three times and he on each occasion asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make a dua for him to invocate and to supplicate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to invoke and to supplicate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a shahada that he be blessed with martyrdom and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Allahumma O Allah sallim hum wa ghanim hum O Allah keep them safe and make them prosperous and so he came back safe all three times and prosperous all three times and then the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he asked the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to advise him of something that will enter him into the paradise and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said alayka bi sawm fa innahu la mithla lahu i advise you to fast for indeed there is nothing like unto it i advise you to fast because there is nothing comparable to fasting so the wisdom of fasting and the importance of taking advantage of the time as we have reached nearly the halfway point in the month of Sha'aban and are just a couple of weeks before Ramadan then the wisdom and the purpose of fasting and the importance of readying ourselves and preparing ourselves mentally and spiritually to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fi ghayat al is of the utmost importance the great imam al hafiz ibn rajab al hanbali rahimahullah ta'ala he says in his tremendous book that he wrote about how to take advantage of the time in general and the special times of the year specifically a lengthy book a very important book about Fadail al Amal, about the merits and the virtues of specific acts of worship at specific times of the year, and how the Salaf al Salihin and how the righteous Muslims from the early generations of Islam took advantage of the time 
the book Lata'if al Ma'arif. He says, Rahimullah Ta'ala, Wa ma min hadihi al Mawasim al Fadila, Mawsimun illa walillahi ta'ala fihi wadifatun min wadaifi ta'atihi. That there are no instances and no occasions from these noble occasions and these noble times of year and events throughout the year except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned specific tasks as it relates to worshipping and obeying Him subhanahu wa ta'ala يُتَقَرَّبُ biha ilayhi that bring the person closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and endear the person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلِلَّهِ فِيهِ لَطِيفَةٌ مِنْ لَطَائِفِ نَفَحَاتِهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subtle acts of kindness and wisdom from the nafahat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the gusting mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is more ample and readily abundant at certain times of the year more than other times of the year يُصِيبُ بِهَا مَنْ يَعُودُ بِفَضْلِهِ وَرَحْمَتِهِ عَلَيْهِ that he causes to reach those that he allows his grace and his mercy to reach. فَسَعِيدُ مَنْ اغْتَنَمَ مَوَاسِمَ الشُّحُورِ وَالْأَيَّامِ وَالسَّاعَاتِ And so the successful person is the one who takes advantage of the mawasim, of the special times that are found in the time throughout the shuhur, throughout the months of the year. Taking advantage of the Ashur al-Hurum, for example, of the sacred months of the year, three of which are connected to the Hajj, and the fourth of which is the recommended time for Umrah, and the practice of the Salaf for Umrah, the month of Rajab, which comes before the month of Sha'aban, and likewise taking advantage of the ten days of the Hijjah, and taking advantage of the month of Sha'aban, and taking advantage of the ayyam, the special days throughout the week, as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith of Usama bin Zayd, that he used to constantly fast on Mondays and on Thursdays. And likewise, the day of Al-Jumu'ah, the day of Friday, and the khasa'is, the special matters that are found and the virtues that are found, connected to the day of Al-Jumu'ah and the Sa'at and to take advantage of the special hours throughout the day like the time of the Adhkar of the Sabah and the Masa for example the Adhkar of the morning and the evening that I've said after Salat Al-Fajr and after Salat Al-Asr before the rising of the sun and before the setting of the sun or like the night time and specifically the last third of the night to take advantage of the time and the special times and the special times throughout the day the special times throughout the day that are prime time to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Sa'id the person who is successful and happy is a person who takes advantage of these mawasim of these seasons and events throughout the months and throughout the Ayyam throughout the days and throughout the sa'at and throughout the hours and the various times of the day. وَتَقَرَّبَ فِيهَا إِلَى مَوْلَاهُ بِمَا فِيهَا مِنْ مَضَائِفِ الطَّاعَاتِ Using these times to draw near and endear himself to Allah or herself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the wadha'if of the ta'at with the special tasks and the uh, responsibilities and the tasks that are at hand taking advantage of the time with what is legislated to be done at that time of acts of obedience فَعَسَى أَن تُصِيبَهُ نَفْحَةٌ مِنْ تِلْكَ النَّفَحَاتِ perhaps by doing so a nafha a gust of mercy from the gust of Allah's mercy that he sends to his creatures will reach him or reach her فَيَسْعَدُ بِهَا سَعَادَةً يَأْمَنُ بَعْدَهَا إِنَ النَّارِ وَمَا فِيهَا مِنَ اللَّفَحَاتِ And so on account of that, they may be successful and find felicity and happiness 
that causes them to be safe, to be safe thereafter from the hellfire and the scorching winds and blazing heat of the hellfire. Allah is a refuge you saw from the hellfire. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he has some beautiful speech in his book Madaraj As-Salikin where he talks about how the best way to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to fulfill the task at hand to do the thing that is best to do at each time according to the dictates of the time and according to the situation that a person finds oneself in and this person that he will be like the matar he will be like the qatar like the matar like the falling rain wherever it falls wherever he is wherever it is it is of a benefit a person he will bring benefit for himself and benefit for others by doing what each situation calls for and each moment of the day and each hour of the day and each day of the week and each month of the year calls for specifically taking advantage of the best times and he says rahimullah ta'ala in another place in Madaraj al-Sariqin he says وَأَوْقَاتُ نَفَحَاتِ الْإِلَهِيَةِ that there are times of a nafahat al-ilahiya in which the nafahat of Allah and the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sent by Allah in large gusts hiya lati man ta'arrada laha yushiku an la yuhramaha that are as such that if he makes himself presentable at these times that he makes himself available at these times it presents himself to receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at these times and makes himself presentable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at such times and prepares himself for such times then it will soon come to pass and la yuhramaha that he will not be deprived of receiving these great gusts of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this ample copious amount of mercy that is available more at certain times than at other times. وَمَا نَعْرَضَ عَنْهَا فَهِيَ عَنْهُ أَشَدُ عِرَاضًا And whoever turns away, averse and disinterested, from receiving these tremendous gusts of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah makes His mercy and forgiveness available to a larger degree than at other, than at other times, فَهِيَ عَنْهُ أَشَدُ عِرَاضًا then he will find that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more disinterested with him than he is with it. And Allah's refuge is sought. He mentions this likewise, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his book, Idatul Sabirin, in a section that has been translated under the title, Al Bawa'ith ala Tark al Ma'asi. The things that motivate a person to leave off sin and disobedience. And the translation with this explanation by Shaykh Abdul Razak al Badr is uh, available and has been printed by uh, one of the Safi publishers. And this section from the book Idatul Sabirin, Idatul Sabirin is a section about the things that strengthen a person's patience and leaving off sin and disobedience. This is what the actual chapter is that has been translated and explained by the Shaykh. In this book, he, amongst his bawa'ith, amongst the things that are spiritual means to strengthen one's patience, he says, Rahimullah ta'ala ta'arruduhu ila man al qulubu bayna usbu'ayhi. Is that the person takes advantage of the time. Meaning that he busies himself, as he explains elsewhere, that if a person is preoccupied with goodness, and he preoccupies his time, and his body, and his health, and his energy, and his wealth with goodness, then it cannot be used, any that which is mashgul, yushagal, any that which is already being put to use cannot be reassign somewhere else meaning that if he busies himself with good and busies his wealth and his resources with good that that will prevent him from falling into sin and disobedience if he preoccupies himself with goodness 
فَبِهِ وَنَعْمَا Otherwise, his self will preoccupy him with foolishness. And he will squander his wealth and his resources. So he speaks about this in length throughout his writings. And likewise, you find many statements that are similar to this by Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn al-Tami, rahimullah ta'ala, throughout the voluminous writings of the Shaykh. And he mentions here specifically, تَعَرُّضُهُ that he makes himself available and he takes advantage of the time and makes himself presentable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the special times of the year. At all times, but specifically in the special times of the year. And he prepares for these times. تَعَرُّضُهُ إِلَى مَنَ الْقُرُوبُ بَيْنَ أُسْبُعَيْهِ He makes himself available and he presents himself in front of the one who the hearts of the creation are between his fingers. وَأَزِمَّةُ الْأُمُورُ وَأَزِمَّةُ الْأُمُورِ بِيَدَيْهِ And who the control of all matters is in his hands. وَإِنْتِهَاءُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ إِلَيْهِ عَلَى الدَّوَامِ And who all matters refer back to constantly and are under the control of constantly. فَلَعَلَّهُ أَنْ يُصَادِفَ أَوْقَاتِ النَّفَحَاتِ in constantly doing so, preoccupying himself with good and making his self and his actions and his behavior and his speech and his thoughts even presentable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then in doing so, لَعَلَّهُ It is hoped أَنْ يُصَادِفَ أَوْقَاتِ النَّفَحَاتِ That he will coincide with the special times in which the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is copiously Available, available in abundance, and yani the great times of the year, the great seasons of the year, and great events throughout the year, like what we are approaching of Ramadan, what we are found, we find ourselves in here in the month of Sha'aban and preparing for Ramadan. As was said by Ibn Rajab, that the preparation for Ramadan that is done in Sha'aban, the various acts that it takes, the status of the Sunan al qabliya any of the Sunan that are prayed before the mandatory prayers. Any a person prepares himself for the mandatory prayers with supererogatory prayers, with extra obligatory prayers, things that are not mandatory that are recommended because of his love of the prayer and because of his anxiousness and his longing to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise in the month of Sha'aban, he prepares himself as the Salaf prepared their self by way of fasting. And reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he says here, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him, that in doing so, and constantly being like this, making himself presentable and available to receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَعَلَّهُ أَنْ يُصَادِفَ أَوْقَاتِ النَّفَحَاتِ كَمَا فِي الْأَثَرِ الْمَعْرُوفِ And he, perhaps he may encounter a time and he may be preoccupied and busied with worship in a time where the nafahat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are available, where Allah has sent great amounts of mercy and made special in, its, in their status above every other time or any, every other time besides it or other times of the year. Kamath al athar al ma'roof, as is mentioned in the well known narration that is reported in mawquf and marafu form, and is greater to be Hassan by Shaykh al-Abani rahimahullah ta'ala in some places in Da'if and other places and it is thought that perhaps the Shaykh took back his ruling of grading this to be authentic where it is said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Anas and Abu Huraira and others that is ascribed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when I can fihi maqal however some of the scholars uh, the scholars dispute over its authenticity that it is said, Inna lillahi fi ayami dahrihi nafahatin fata'arradu li nafahatihi wa sa'aru allaha an yastura auratikum wa yu'amina ra'atikum. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has special times uh, throughout the ayam al-dahr, and yani throughout the days that, uh, that make up for time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has nafahat. And he has gusts of mercy. فَتَعَرَّضُوا لِنَفَحَاتِهِ فَتَعَرَّضُوا So make yourself available. Make yourself 
prepared, prepare yourself, uh, make yourself presentable to receive the nafahat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to conceal your flaws and to protect you from raw'atikum, any what causes you fear and dread. This last portion to make dua that Allah yastura awratikum wa yu'amina raw'atikum has come in other narrations from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is authentic in the first part of the narration its meaning is authentic yani that there are special times of the year that a person must prepare himself or herself for and make themselves available to receive tremendous mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as comes in the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about Ramadan masalan for example مَنْ أَدْرَكَ رَمَضَانْ فَلَمْ يُغْفَرْنَا أَبْعَدُهُ اللَّهِ That whoever encounters the month of Ramadan and is not forgiven on account of it, meaning on account of what they do in the month of Ramadan, أَبْعَدُهُ اللَّهِ May Allah distance that person far away. May Allah place that person far away from his mercy. We seek Allah's refuge. He says, وَنَعَلَّهُ فِي كَثْرَةِ تَعَرُّذِهِ أَنْ يُصَادِفَ سَعَةً مِنَ السَّعَةِ الَّتِي لا يسأل الله فيها شيئا إلا أعطاه. Perhaps by making himself constantly presentable and available to receive the mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, that he will encounter the special times of the year and the special times of the week and the special times of the day in which he will not ask Allah for anything except that Allah will grant him what he has asked for. فَمَنْ عَطَى فَمَنْ عُطِيَ مَنْ شُورَ الدُّعَى عُطِيَ الْإِجَابَةِ For indeed whoever is blessed to receive مَنْ شُورَ الدُّعَى Whoever is blessed to receive the gift of a dua, then he is likewise blessed with الإجابة Meaning the إجابة, the answer to his prayer, is by default connected to being guided to making the dua itself invoking Allah and supplicating to Allah and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed to respond to the supplications of those who summon him فَإِنَّهُ لَوْ لَمْ يُرِدْ إِجَابَتَهُ لَمَّا أَلْحَمَهُ الدُّعَى For indeed if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want to answer his dua, Ibn Qayyim says, then Allah will not have inspired him to make dua in the first place. وَلَا يَسْتَوْحِشْ مِنْ ظَاهِرِ الْحَالِ And a person should not find himself in despair, in a state of wahsha, and he feeling lost and despondent because of ظاهر الحال, of how things look on the outside and how things appear to be for them. And their circumstance and their situation. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يُعَامِلُ عَبْدَهُ مُعَامَلَةَ مَا لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ فِي أَفْعَالِهِ كَمَا لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ فِي صِفَاتِهِ For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interacts with His servants with the dealings of one who لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ فِي أَفْعَالِهِ who there are none like unto him or comparable to him and how he Acts and what he does, كَمَا لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ فِي صِفَاتِهِ just as there are none like unto him, as relates to his attributes, his divine description, Subhanahu wa Taala, and he saw the person must understand that there is nothing like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and how Allah deals with his servants, and what he sees to be a test on the outside and an affliction on the outside. May be a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah may test the person in their wealth or in their health or in their uh, behavior even and in their character with a test that may break them down and humble them and make them realize their dire need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will cause them to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and endear their self to Allah and to plead with Allah in a state of maskana and faqar, in a state of Realization of their dire need of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala He says so There is nothing like unto Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala As it relates to how Allah interacts with the servants A person shouldn't look at their situation And just assume 
that Allah must be angry with them and so there is no hope for them and these sorts of ill thoughts that a person has about their self and even sometimes about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but rather they should combine between knowing that they are not deserving of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have su'a dhan bi nafsihim bi anfusihim they have su'a dhan one has su'a dhan bi nafsihim and he has poor thoughts about himself and he has husn al-dhan bi rabbihi good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this causes him to combine between fear and hope and drawing near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he says فَإِنَّهُ مَا حَرَمَهُ إِلَّا لِيُعْتِيَهُ for indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only deprives his servants from the things that they want so that he may grant them that which they hope for. وَلَا أَمْرَضَهُ إِلَّا لِيَشْفِيَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may test the person with sickness only so that he may cure the person. وَلَا أَفْقَرَهُ إِلَّا لِيُغْنِيَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may cause poverty to befall a person so that he may enrich that person. When the person turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pleads with Allah, for their needs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give that person self-sufficiency. وَلَا أَمَاتَهُ إِلَّا لِيُحْيَهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not cause a person to die at the time that they die, except that He may bring the person back to life. وَمَا أَخْرَجَ أَبَوَيْهِ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not remove our earliest parents, Adam and Hawa, from the paradise, إِلَّا لِيُعِدَهُمَا إِلَيْهَا على أكمل حال except so that he may return them back to the paradise in the most complete and perfect circumstance and situation meaning so they can live eternally and so the believers and the righteous from their offspring can live eternally in the paradise may Allah make us from them فَالرَّبُّ تَعَالَ يُنْعِمُ عَلَى عَبْدِهِ بِابْتِلَائِهِ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he blesses his servant by testing him وَيُعْتِيَهُ بِحِرْمَانِهِ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows tremendous favors upon his servants by depriving them of certain things. وَيُصِحُّهُ بِسَقَمِهِ And he may restore health to a person by testing him with sickness. وَلَا يَسْتَوْحِشْ عَبْدُهُ مِنْ حَالَةٍ تَسُؤُهُ And in this is something that is both physical and spiritual. A person, a person may be tested with spiritual sicknesses or with physical sickness so that it will heal their heart and heal their body Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he, when he tests the person and the person is patient and he does not complain the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for example mentioned about such a person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will restore his body his skin and his his ligaments and his bones and he, to him in a way that was better than what he had before it was better than what he had before. Allah will make the person physically stronger by way of their being patient with sickness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the person spiritually stronger by way of their being patient with sickness. We ask Allah for an afu wal afiyah wal mu'afat. He says, Rahimullah ta'ala, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with the creation in mysterious ways and ways that they cannot understand. And he causes them to fall sick so that he may restore them to health وَلَا يَسْتَوْحِشْ فَلَا يَسْتَوْحِشْ عَبْدُهُ مِنْ حَالَةٍ تَسُؤُهُ أَصْلًا So the person should never feel desperate and should never feel despair because of some circumstance or situation that they are going through that may be upsetting to them أصلًا to begin with إِلَّا إِذَا كَانَتْ تُرْضِبُهُ عَلَيْهِ وَتُبْعِدُهُ مِنْهُ Unless their circumstance is the type of circumstance that causes them to be hated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of how they respond to the test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or because of their disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa tub'iduhu minhu. That is what should upset the person that they in their behavior get farther away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that is reported authentically from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in the hadith of Umar in the khutbah that Umar gave at al-Jabi on his way to the Bayt al-Maqdis 
and he sat in the sham and he gave a one on khutbah in which he said in the khutbah part of the khutbah he said I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say man sa'athu sayi'atuhu wa sarrathu hasanatuhu fa huwa mu'min that whoever is upset by their sins and made happy because of their good deeds then that person is a believer then that person is a believer so what should upset the person is when they find themselves in a situation where they are getting farther from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and where they may be uh, causing Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hate them by way of their behavior this is what should upset the person but what Allah tests the person with from his qadr and he should not upset the person aslan to begin with it is something that Allah tests him with so as to raise him and so as to honor him Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala in many places in his writings he discusses at length the wisdom of fasting and how fasting increases a person in taqwa and he explains that the maqsood of fasting goes back to two things that it goes back to two things the first way that fasting causes a person to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he leaves off his desires and he leaves off his lust and he leaves off sin and disobedience and he leaves off what is ma'aluf and he, what is, and he naturally loved to him from the things of this dunya from food and drink and that which is halal and so on and so forth during the daytime hours in the month of Ramadan because of his love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second purpose comes as an extension of that that he does this so that he could focus himself upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and getting near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the reason why fasting brings about success and there are many statements of Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala that can be quoted in this regard and I believe that one of the mashayikh is going to uh, do some explanation from the book Zad and Ma'ad by Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala about how the Prophet sallallahu fasted and the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa fasting and these sorts of reminders they are heard all throughout the month of Ramadan we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us those who repair for nafahati min rahmatihi yusibu biha man yasha'u min ibadihi wa nas'ala Allah an yastura awratina wa yu'amina ra'atina we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who prepare ourselves to receive these special times of the year in which His mercy gust and is widely available more than any other time of the year. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cover and conceal our flaws and to protect us from that which we dread and that which we fear. And I apologize, but this is um, as much as I can um, speak this evening. It is quite late here. I ask you to um, uh, excuse me. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for an afu wa afia, for dunya wa akhira. Uh, there are a few questions that were sent beforehand. Uh, most of them are related to al fidya He says, or the questioner says, in which state of pregnancy uh, can a woman start giving fidya? In which state of pregnancy can a woman start giving fidya? Is it as soon as she knows that she has conceived, meaning that she is pregnant? Another question says, is it a condition that the fidya that you give should be the same as the meal that you eat in your homes? I'm going to answer these two questions, Yani not which I view to be most correct in accordance to the various discussions of the scholars on this topic, is that as we know the scholars differ about what the uh, pregnant woman does and what the breastfeeding woman does if she fears for her own health or if she fears for her child and that some of the scholars make a distinction between if she is afraid for her own health meaning that she fears that 
fasting will significantly weaken her or she feels very weak already because of her pregnancy uh, as opposed to if she is afraid that this may have a negative effect upon the child meaning that if she is breastfeeding that it will affect her milk supply for example or if she doesn't feel physically uh, weakened when she is pregnant and she is afraid for the child and this is a distinction that is a well-known distinction that is made by many of the scholars and there are no statements of the scholars about this as Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymeen he held the position that there is no difference between the woman who fears for herself or fears for her child and therefore the distinction between al fidya meaning al it'am her feeding a child or her feeding uh, a poor person rather uh, if she withholds fasting if she withholds from fasting because she is afraid for the well-being of her child whether she is pregnant or breastfeeding that the situation is uh, one and the same the situation is one and the same and he held the view and it seems to be and Allah knows best and I don't want to have that Andy, and he, according to me and he, but what I understand from this situation and so what I will speak on according to the best of my understanding having looked at the situation over the course of many years and having changed my position a couple of times over the course of many years is that it is all the same whether she fears for herself or fears for her child and in both situations she is to make al-qadha wa la fidyata alayha as the shaykh says in his writings such as his durus fiqhiya min al-muhadharat al-jami'iyya and other places in his writings where he discusses this topic and he that she is to make the days up when she is able and there is no fidya upon her she is not to feed anybody in such a situation and the generality of the statement of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has removed fasting from the marid and from the musafir from the sick person and from the traveler and from the hamil and from the marudir and the woman who is pregnant and the woman who is uh, suckling who is breastfeeding uh, who is nursing a child rather who is nursing a child or uh, breastfeeding a child and he, that this is that these women that they are mentioned alongside the traveler and alongside the sick person alongside the traveler and alongside the sick person and therefore they take the same ruling which is al-qadha which is that they when they have the ability they make those days up wala it'am alayhima and there is no it'am for them there is no fidya for them there is no fidya for them uh, by extension the question therefore uh, would be so at what point does she withhold from fasting at what point does she withhold from fasting she can withhold from fasting if she is pregnant or breastfeeding and just like anyone else if it is easier for her to fast it is better for her to fast but she has a ruqsa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was mentioned by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she has a concession from Allah so long as she is pregnant or so long as she is breastfeeding she has a concession but just as we say for a traveler just as we say for a person who is mildly sick I need mean that if it is easier that it is better to fast if it is easy for them I any mean other person who is mildly sick we don't say about such a person that they are just unrestricted the absolutely excuse from fasting per se but in the situation of the traveler we say even if it is not difficult for them to uh, travel even if it is not difficult for them to fast rather while they are traveling that they are excused from fasting however in their situation in their situation just as the situation of any pregnant woman or any breastfeeding woman in their situation if it is easier for them to fast if it is uh, easy for them to fast it is preferred for them to fast it is as a shaykh ibn Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala mentions it is abra li dhimmatihim and it is uh, safer for them it is safer for them it is that which is more guaranteed to protect them from incurring any blame any 
it is uh, better for them so that they don't have the difficulty of making up the days outside of Ramadan where no one else is fasting besides them and that sort of thing. And so it is better for a woman to try to fast while she is pregnant so that she doesn't have, and we know that many of the sisters, they are constantly pregnant. They may go many years where they, every month, uh, every Ramadan that comes, they may be pregnant. And if you have, you know, four or five Ramadans that are binding upon you to make up, then that can be very difficult for you. And so if it is easy for you to fast, then fast. If it is difficult, then withhold from fasting and make up those days at other times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. As for the question, is it a condition that the fidya that you give should be the same as the meal that you eat in your homes? There's no evidence for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He just open endedly mentioned fidya ta'amu miskin, any fidya which is the feed of poor person. And he, the qaid that we can place upon that is the general rule that is mentioned by some of the scholars when they say that al aslu fin nafaqat wa ma. يَقُومُ مَقَامَهَا And the asal as relates to uh, Spending Any mandatory spending Like the zakawat And sarakat And so on and so forth And al-fidya And al-kafarat And so on and so forth That it is to be given to the Muslims And so the poor person Should be a poor Muslim And he, some of the scholars Some of the mashaykh Over the years That we have asked this question to Said that if you cannot find A for Muslim that you can feed a non-Muslim However, every effort should be given To find a Muslim And to feed a Muslim As for what you feed them And he then You feed them uh, Food that is either a pre-cooked meal Or something that takes its place Something that takes its place uh, And you can give them Unprepared food As Shaykh Ibn Uthameen ta'ala, For example, he mentions That it is better to give uh, people food that has not been cooked Because then they will have the ability to use the food when they want to use it To cook it when they want to cook it If you give them pre-cooked food, it may spoil if they don't eat it quickly And so it may be easier or maybe better to uh, give uncooked food And it may be easier on the other hand to give somebody already cooked food So they don't have to cook for their children on a particular day Find a Muslim family that you know is poor And feed them for uh, the situations where fidya actually applies As for the other question Let me find it uh, What is your advice for Muslims who sleep most of the day when fasting? Alhamdulillah uh, The purpose of Ramadan is to decrease in our normal ma'alufat, the things that we are normally acclimated to of eating and drinking and intercourse and so on and so forth. And if a person needs sleep because of their health and they need to sleep a uh, uh, little longer than they normally would because of their age or their health, then that's something that's understood. But if it is just out of laziness, then... We should not be lazy in the month of Ramadan. We should take advantage of the time. And any person who is sleeping unnecessarily for lengthy periods of time, then this, of course, will eat away the hours of their days. And it will eat away at their month. And they will be remorseful at the end of the month. They will be remorseful at the end of the month. However, it is a common practice in many places in the Muslim world for people to stay up in the nighttime in Ramadan and to sleep Starting at Fajr and Ramadan And if they do this so that they can have the energy in the night To worship Allah and to recite the Quran And so on and so forth And then Alhamdulillah And if they do this to waste their nights And to uh, just sleep throughout the day So that they don't feel the pains of hunger Or the discomfort of hunger Then they are missing a great uh, portion of benefit In the month of Ramadan <laughs> This is where we conclude Sayyidin in Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala Tawfiq wa sadad wa al-hidayata ila sabir wa shad wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Jazakallahu khayran Ustazan al-Fadil We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this from you in the scales of good deeds in the hereafter and we pray to Allah that we will be able to benefit from you in future lectures and webinars
Barakallahu fikum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh